Many photos have all kinds of problems, from scratches to blemishes, and even particular objects or people that you want to remove out of your photographs. So Photoshop will assist you in all of these healing tools to correct a lot of these types of issues. Now the first type of tool that we're gonna look at in this video is the Spot Healing Brush. Now the Spot Healing Brush is completely automated meaning it will choose the areas to blend in. And it is also your first line of defense. If you have a very simple fix, then the spot healing brush will work wonders. It really does. It can fix something very quickly if you're targeting very easy blemishes or spots that you want to fix. Now, if you have a more complicated healing area, you're going to need to use a different type of brush. And we'll get to those in the next several videos. Okay, so as you can see here, we have this photo of this 18th century painting of this Chinese emperor. And as you can see here, we have a few blemishes that we can attempt to fix. Now to select the healing tools, you can use the keyboard shortcut J, and that will automatically select the healing tools. Now if you right click over here, you can see that we have five types. And again, we're gonna cover this first type right here, the spot healing brush tool. Now the spot healing brush has three different main options that we're gonna cover in this video. Content aware, create texture, and proximity match. Don't worry about the mode for now. I almost always use normal. This covers about 95% of the types of problems that you'll need to fix. So we wanna keep this at normal. Now, if you wanna change the size of your brush, you can just go right here and you can select a size. Don't worry about these other options. We'll cover these in future videos. But for now, if you wanna alter the size of your brush, you can do it right here. So the first type of option we're gonna cover is the proximity match. Now the proximity match works just as it states. It's basically gonna take the surrounding pixels around the area that you target to heal. It will take those surrounding pixels and use those as the sample. And again, it does it automatically. So for instance, when we come down here and paint over this, it's going to take these surrounding pixels and use these to replace the targeted area. So the proximity match is really your first line of defense. This is the first option you wanna try if you have a relatively easy fix. And it works very well if you have a very consistent background. In other words, pixels that are very similar that surround your target area. And as you can see, we have this beige color. So this is probably gonna work very well. So let's go ahead and paint over this now. And then let's see what happens. And take a look at that. That worked perfectly. So again, the proximity match works very well if you have a very consistent background. Where it does not work well is if you have a lot of variance. So if we moved over to the face here and tried it, watch what happens when we try to remove this line or wrinkle here. Let's go ahead and try this and you'll see what happens. And take a look at that. That is very distorted. And remember, the reason is it's going to try to take the surrounding pixels and use that as the sample. So it's actually working as design, but it's just not the right option for what we're trying to do here. So let's go ahead and step backward. And now let's switch over to Create Texture. Now Create Texture works a little bit differently. It is actually only gonna use the pixels inside the area you target. That's the key difference. It's not gonna go outside, it's actually just gonna use the pixels inside the target area as its sample. So let's go ahead and try this again now with this option. And you can see that worked a lot better. So again, if you have a little bit of variance, the Create Texture is probably your better option. Now if you have a lot of variance, the option you want to use is content aware. And let's say we wanted to remove part of this beard right here. And you can see this is very complicated. We have these lines and we have a lot of variance here. So let's say we just wanted to remove part of this. So let's go ahead and just sort of select some of this. And you can see that did a pretty good job. Look at that. So again, you want to use content aware if you have a lot of variance in your background. Now, there are a couple of points I want to make before we close out this lecture. First, as I said, the spot healing tool is pretty much automated in terms of the sample that's being used. You do not select the sample, the algorithm does. And what does that mean? Well, a lot of times you might find that the spot healer doesn't work. And so the best thing to do is just simply to step backward and try to paint over it again. And sometimes you'll get it where it's perfect. Now, if it's a very complicated fix, then you have to move on to some of these other tools, which we're gonna talk about in the next several videos. Now, let's switch back to the proximity match here. I wanna show you one more thing. There's this diffusion option over here. And basically, the way this works is the lower the number, you're gonna use with grainier images. The higher the number is worked with smoother images. So that's basically the way that works. And the default is five, as you can see. 
And I want to make one final point before we go, and that is you always want to create an empty layer when you start healing your photographs. We didn't do it in this tutorial because this is just a tutorial, but if you're going to go ahead and start fixing things, it's best to go ahead and create an empty layer and then go ahead and start healing. That way you can always just delete the layer and start over and not have to worry about stepping backward. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we will take a look at the healing brush tool.